The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. The really important thing that I mentioned before is we can use this model in order to understand gulfs. Um, a gulf is, you know, is a gap. In our case, it's a gap to get from one step in the model, in our, in our seven stages, to the next step, you know, from one stage to the next stage. Um, and the first kind of uh, gaps we have, or gulfs we have, are the ones that happen on this side, the gulfs of execution that somehow make it hard to execute on the goal I have. The other part, guess what, are gulfs of evaluation, where I have something that, I, that happened, and I need to evaluate and compare to my goal, and that somehow gets hard. For example, a gulf of execution might be, how do I operate this device? I know I want to turn on the light, but it's a designer lamp, I can't find the switch. Right? Or um, it's, I don't know, it's a device that uh, I'm supposed to turn on, like the projector. I press the on button, and nothing happens for a minute. Did I turn it on? I don't know. Right? So I have a gulf of, of evaluation, because I cannot judge whether my action actually um, resulted in the goal that I was going for. Our role as designers is to bridge these gulfs, bridge the execution, the gulf of execution, by giving people signifiers, you've talked about those with affordances, um, constraints, mappings, conceptual models, all those things help to make interfaces that bridge these gulfs of execution, that let people go from a goal to this intention or plan to the actual action sequence uh, and its execution. And on the other hand, on the evaluation side, we provide, again, good conceptual models and feedback. Feedback is super important in your interface design to get people from, all right, this is what happened, and this is the effect of it, and here's what it means to you whether you reached your goal or not. Let me give you an example. I like peanuts. Um, and even a simple action uh, can be hard, right? So, the other day I got a bag of peanuts, and um, my goal was, mmm, hungry, right? Uh, and then the plan was, all right, I'm going to open this bag of peanuts. That's quite clear still. But then the next question was, now I need to formulate an action sequence. And I was looking at the bag of peanuts, the bag of peanuts was looking back at me, and it was not indicating how to open it, right? It was just this like completely sealed in, you know, these things, right? Yeah, where you don't find any handle or part where you can rip or, or open this thing. Um, I think s many CDs, when they're like in their plastic cover, are also like that. Um, so the connection between my plan and, 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 and how I execute it is unclear. The problem, of course, is I was missing the, the, the mappings and the, sig uh, sorry, the, yeah, the mappings and the signifiers. I couldn't see how this bag was supposed to be opened. Um, and another example, a different bag of peanuts, could be it actually has a little red plastic tab, right? One of those little red strips, you know them, right? So I'm like, oh, mm, peanuts, good. I got a plan, open this bag. I got an action sequence mapped out because there is this red thing and it has like little arrows printed on it. So I know exactly what I'm supposed to do, right? My action sequence is ready. Now the final step I need to do is just execute it. So I pull in the little red tab and what happens is your right hand, you have a little red tab. In the left hand, you have an unopened bag of peanuts. So in that case, the action sequence failed, right? Again, I didn't get to actually execute it properly and, and change the world the way I wanted to. Which, by the way, seems to be an, uh, a universal design of Amazon packaging these days, right? I always end up with this little tab in my hand and then there's like still closed package. Anyway, um, so the Gulf of Execution opens up because there might be differences between the actions I plan and the actions that the system offers. So we're back to affordances, right? I might say, I know I want to do this, but I don't know how to do it here because I'm not seeing the operations in the interface. An ideal system lets me execute my planned actions directly without having to think about it. I just see exactly how things work and matches my plan precisely. Here's an example of the, from the dawn of time. Um, Back when people had analog projectors, threading the film into the projector was a major source of 
entertainment for the audience. You know, like uh, if you had a class in school and the teacher was trying to thread a film into the projector, that could easily waste 20 minutes. Um, because the film had to go through all these different crazy paths and you had to like thread it in, it had to be grabbed by the, by the various reels that were spinning until it was finally in there and was going from one reel onto the other reel and then the movie could play. So it was unclear, difficult. So if you said like, my goal is to watch a movie, um, yeah, you didn't even have an idea of how to map your, your action sequence or your plan because it was very hard to do. And even if you had it worked out, it was still physically difficult to get it right. <coughs> what happened was that industry came up with projectors that would take the thread and do that automatically for you. So you only had to hold the, uh, you know, the, the film uh, reel end into like a little slot and it would grab it from there and like thread it through the entire machine all by itself. So that means the thing has become automatic and uh, the process, however, was still visible. You could still see the, you know, uh, the film end go through all these things, but you didn't have to do it anymore. So easier from an, a user point of view as long as it worked. If it didn't work, it was probably even worse than a manual system because you, now you had to mess with an automatic system. When VCRs came around, um, and so videotape recorders, they made all this invisible. You know, I'm not sure how many people know this, but when you put a, used to put like a, a, a VCR tape into a, a tape player, what happened to the tape? Anybody know? Yeah? Exactly, and it was actually being wrapped around the, the reading heads um, in, a, in a quite a bizarre fashion, which was something you never had to worry about. So basically, the conceptual model was changed. The user didn't think anymore, I need to thread this, this film. The user's conceptual model went to, I just need to plop this, this cassette into the player. And they didn't know that the stuff was going on there. There was some weird whirring noises for like 10 seconds before the cassette started playing. So you had to kind of guess that something was going on, but you didn't know. The only time you found out, of course, was when it broke. You try to pull out your cassette tape and you end up with like, you know, 15 meters of tape. Um, so that's when the system made it invisible and changed the conceptual model of users. Um, and those are all examples of how the... Um, the affordances, mapping, constraints, and all these things that we've learned about the conceptual models can help bridge those gulfs of, of execution. Um, here's another example of a, of a system. Um, I, I, I love this one because it's a Bluetooth headset that has um, two buttons for volume up and down, obvious, and then it has a different, uh, one more button, and that button is called mode. Whenever you see a system, a device that has a button that's called mode, that's basically a warning label, you should be aware. Um, in this case, and I have to read this because I can't remember it, depending on how long you pressed this button and how often you pressed it and in what state the system was, this one mode button would be used to um, turn the device on, turn it off, to pair it via Bluetooth, uh, to start voice dialing, to repeat the last call that you, that you dialed, um, to stop a call that is being dialed, or, and those are my favorite too, to accept a call or to reject a call. <laughs> um, and you also used it to hang up in the end. So, um, but I mean, no problem, right? Because the current state of the system, what was going on, was clearly indicated to you with two colored LEDs on the Bluetooth headset that you're wearing right here. Um, so anyway, uh, so obviously this system has all kinds of issues, visibility, what's the state, what features are available, what can I do? Basically you always have to carry the user manual with it to, to know how it works. Um, and that makes it terribly hard to formulate any kind of action sequence, right, to, to do what you want to do. You still know your goal, I want to call somebody or I want to reject this call, but you don't know how to do it. And even if you try, you're going to probably fail because you pressed the button for a moment too long and then you hung up on somebody instead of accepting the call. All those kinds of things. Bad design. Um, let's go to the Gulf of Evaluation um, uh, uh, specifically, or I should make this moving because for you guys it's on this side. Um, <coughs> great example, I think, is printers. You've, you've sent a job to the printer, and you walk up to the printer, and you see a blinking green LED. Now, on the sense of perception, 
no problem. You can very clearly see that LED blink. No, no worries. But unless there's like bright sun on it and you can't see, even see that. That's another problem. That would be a problem in perception. But if you can see the LED blink, you know, loud and clear, so to say, perception is fine. Now comes interpretation. What does it mean? Does it mean that the job is, you know, 80% printed and it's going to come out any second now? Or does it mean that it hung up on like a large postscript command uh, or the buffers, the memory is full or whatever, or is it out of paper? Um, so you need to understand what the feedback means. So that's the interpretation phase. And then, um, you know, the, th the, the final step is, of course, interpret whether that's what you wanted, right? Um, is that actually, you know, leading towards the goal that you're aiming for? Anybody ever played Myst here? Anybody know the adventure game Myst? Ah, yeah, okay, one retro gamer guy there. Um, so um, this was an adventure game that basically, it's typical of all of these kinds of puzzle games that you find now on, on, on like uh, in apps, in app stores and stuff. The point was you would walk around an island, it was completely empty, uh, no people there, and you would like, I don't know, see a lever, and you, you pulled that lever, and then on the other end of the island, a gate opened, right? So as a user interface designer, you'll say like, well, that's bad design, right? There's no law of like proximity. There's like maybe the mapping isn't even natural and, and visibility, feedback, all sucks. Well, that was point of, the point of it, right? It's a game. It's supposed to be hard. Um, part of the fun of the game was to find out these very unnatural mappings, these very strange affordances. Um, what I'm trying to say is don't make your interface into an adventure game, right? That's not what people are aiming for when they use your system. So that's put together from goals, plans, specifying, performing actions, sequences, executing them, and then perceiving, interpreting, and comparing them to what we wanted to reach. Um, <clears throat> The idea of the seven stages of action is that they provide us a design guideline, though, so they give us a basic checklist to go through to avoid the gulfs. For example, you can say, all right, what do I want to accomplish? That's the goal. Oftentimes, that's actually something that you determine without even looking at the device or system, because that's something you decide beforehand. Um, now the question is, the first one is, I want to move from this very abstract goal to a concrete plan with this tool, you, you know, software, app, um, device, whatever. What are the action sequences that I could use? Are there very, you know, several different alternatives maybe that I could use? And that's where you need to, in order to make that plan, you already need to see um, in the system uh, what it offers, what it's basically there for. From there on, I need to determine what are the concrete actions I can do and how do I do them? So the per specification and execution of the action sequence. And on the other side, can I perceive the result physically? Um, if it's a dim, you know, I don't know, uh, cheapo LCD uh, touch screen, I might not even be able to read it in broad daylight, and I, I struggle with the physical, you know, uh, uh, perception of results. Um, what does it mean? Is, is it clear what the system is telling me? You know? Wonderful scene in, in the movie Office Space, which I'm sure you guys are all aware of. If not, go ahead and watch it, um, where they are you know, having a fight with the, with the printer because it's saying PC load letter, you know, whatever that means. Um, and then when you interpret, you need to finally decide, is that what I wanted to get? Is this um, <clears throat> accomplishing my goal? So in summary, um, those things all... Um, lead to sort of the, uh, the seven stages of action help us to get to a, a whole set of, um, um, of, of design principles. This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.